Afternoon peeps, and me again, Sean from Happy Days Veg. I hope you're all keeping well. It is uh, Tuesday the 26th of April, and I hope you're all keeping well. Thanks for coming back to the channel. You find me here in the polytunnel, and today I've potted on some tomato seedlings. They're looking quite healthy, these ones. I've got my other tomatoes in there. They don't look, considering they are older, they don't look much, much better. There's all my pepper plants. That, those are desperate to be planted, so I want to be planting some of them this week. What else do I know? I've got all sorts of bits and bobs. Uh, but I just want to apologise for not seeing you for a while. Partly the reason for that was I broke my laptop. And... It just made it virtually, in, not impossible, but made it unbearable just to try and create a video. Also, you might notice I look a bit different. No, I haven't got any greyer. Well, I have. Yes, I think I've got a bit, bit big around the girth, but I'm a year older. It was my birthday the weekend. So I was busy drinking champagne and eating fine food. But I'm back now. So I just wanted to let you know the update of what's going on. And the surprising thing, not surprising thing, but the main thing is I've planted nothing outside in the ground as of yet. I've got three large raised beds. <clears throat> I've got three medium sized round beds. And I've created six of the IBC three in one raised beds out the back of the polytunnel. They're all ready to plant, apart from the fact the last two need the, the watering system put in there. So what I'm going to do is, I'm just doing it, first of all I'm going to do a little experiment with this, but I'll tell you about this in a second. I'm going to finish my tea, sort these seeds out in this bag, and then I'm going to finish the other two. And then tomorrow, I'm going to plant my sweet corn out, because my sweet corn... That's the situation, my sweet corn. You can tell by the size of my hand. They're looking strong and healthy. Roots are coming out the bottom, so they're ready to plant. I'm gonna plant a dozen of them. And then I've gotta make a plan and figure out what I'm planting where. I've got lots of onions to go out. I've got an abundance of leeks. I've got salads. I've got uh, brassicas. I've got peas, I've got beans. All sorts and then in here this is nearly ready for the planting in this self-watering system but I'm going to do a, a more in-depth video on that system just in case it, anybody wants to try and uh, come up with their own version what else do I know the one grapevine is looking fantastic the other one as I say the frost hit it hard and it's knocked it right back so whether I'm going to get any grapes on that one this year I don't know the grapes out of it last year were fantastic. So that's that. All my potatoes are planted. My first early potatoes, they're coming through. They're looking great. I've just got to mulch the top with grass clippings once I cut the grass. I've got so many jobs to do. I'm up to there. I don't know where to start. On top of that, one of my chickens is ill. So I've been looking after my chicken. Uh, so... That's another little worry on my mind. But apart from that, I'd like to say I've got things under control, but I don't think I have. Things, things seem to be running away with me. But the good news is, all my strawberry plants are looking fantastic. I had some of those colossus strawberries last year, and I didn't have one flower or one strawberry. And they've been in the same pots. I did take some runners off. So they're all in the same pots. I've got a few extra ones now. But they're, they're, from here, they look as though most of them have started to flower. So that's good news. So, yeah, it's all under control. So, as I say... Oh, you can't see, but behind you, I've had to put some temporary rack in. That's full of... God, I can't even tell you what's in there. I can see peas. I can see beans. I can see lettuces. I can see... Uh, there's pak choy. There's 
herbs. There's a load of things there. And if I don't pot some of them on and plant some out, they're going to get ruined. So that's it. That's it. Everything's looking good. It's all coming, coming on. Right, what have I got here? The other day I was doing a bit of cooking and I was using a lemon. And I thought, I wonder if I could plant these lemon seeds. Well, let me rephrase that. Of course I can plant the lemon seeds. Whether they grow or not is irrelevant. irrelevant. So I saw this technique a couple of times with the different types of seeds where people put the seeds in the freezer, bring them out and then plant them. And it's supposed to fall the seed into thinking it's, you know, it's gone through a winter or whatever. I don't know. So I've got four seeds there. So I'm going to plant those four seeds in one of my little mushroom tray little propagators. And I'm just going to leave it in here. I'm not going to, nothing's in the propagator. All the propagator in my shed is turned off. I've got no other plants in the house, no other plants in the shed. Everything I've got is in this polytunnel. So I'm going to plant those first, finish my tea, and then crack on with my other jobs. And I'll see you guys later. But what I wanted to tell you first was, you know, I've done an experiment. I can't remember which ones they were. I've done an experiment and I planted two courgette seeds. And in the one cup, there was Westland's multipurpose compost. And in the other cup was mould gold, which is the soil the mould digs up to the surface. Yeah. And I put, I put the, both the seeds in, and yeah, they took ages and ages and ages to germinate. And that's because they were cold. So I took them into the propagation station, and then I totally forgot all about them, to be honest. The results were quite surprising. The one planted in the, 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 the garden soil, which is what it is essentially, were taller only by a bit. The leaf, the size of the leaves were the same compared to the Westland. But what I did notice that when I took the, took them out to split them up to pot them on, the root ball or the root growth in the, in the garden soil was considerably better than in the compost. So there you go. But as one of my viewers said, I should have mixed that soil with a little bit of, uh, uh, vermiculite or something just to fluff it up a bit because it's really really heavy and dense so that is what I'm going to be doing next year I'm going to be uh, experimenting doing half a tray with compost the other tray with my own mixture of a, my own organic comp uh, potting mix so on that note oh my new laptop came yesterday And it's running Windows 11. <laughs> I hate it. I hate it. Anyway, but that's, a, that's, that's my problem. So I'm going to finish my tea. I'm going to plant these. And then I'll show you what I'm doing out the back a bit later while the weather's dry. Until then, take care. Happy days. Oh, and you know the rules. Look, do you like me mug? Carrots and asparagus and peas and beetroots. You know the rules. No tea, no work. Nice. I could do with another one then. Right, Pop Pickers, I'm back. I hope you can see me. So, this is the fifth of six IBC container three-in-one raised beds that I'm building. And I've just finished... Uh, let me take that off there. I've just finished... Uh, I've cut back the weed, weed, weed membrane. And I've installed the 20 mil plastic MDPE pipe round the edge and basically you just drill through and put tie wraps around yep and then I've used a drill with a two millimeter drill bit to strategically drill holes at different angles in the bit that once the water's turned on you'll get you know good coverage now you don't have to worry about covering all the ground with water because the water is going to seep into the soil, dissipate and get sucked through with capillary action and the roots will be sucking it all and the roots will be all everywhere underground. So as long as you get a fair amount of water going in there, job done. Now, as I say, this is 20 mil MDPE, medium density polyethylene. It comes in various sizes and I believe 20 mil is the smallest size. And I know it goes up to 63 mil, and there's half a dozen main 
common sizes, but this is 20 mil, or roughly three quarters of an inch. So I invested in some of these T-pieces, and these T-pieces, the pipe, 20 mil goes in there, 20 mil comes out of there, and then there, that is a three quarter male BSP. And then you buy yourself a, a quick hose quick fit adapter to a three quarter tap, yeah? And it screws straight on. So your, so your hose pipe will clip onto there, sweet as a nut, yeah? And then what I do, I drill a hole through there, a 20 mil hole, a 20 mil hole using a 20 mil step drill bit. Yeah, these are as cheap as chips. Perfect for cutting plastic. Just drill through there. And then this fitting just screws through the side I can't take that one off because I'll put it on with a spanner. That'll stick through the side and that screws on there. So you end up with just your hose connection sticking out, unobtrusive, not going to be in the way when I drive down here or push me lawnmower around here. You're not going to catch yourself on it. Job done. Yep. Yeah? Also, you can see that because this is a well prepared bed, I've already grown my first mug of tea. Oh, could you picture that? Could you picture inventing a flower bed that grows hot mugs of tea with one sugar and skim milk? You'd be a legend. So. Just one other thing. It's quite hard to bend this blue pipe while it's cold into a fairly tight bend. You don't need it too tight. There's no actual plants that are gonna be planted tight into the corners, yeah? So, I purchased one of these. Now this is a 20 mil external. Stay there. This is a 20 mil external bending spring. And your 20 mil pipe fits in there, yeah? And then it allows you to bend it without kinking it. But when I say bend it, I'm not talking about a tight 90 degree bend, but you can get a nice formed bend on it without it kinking. And that was cheap, that was 7 99 but you can still get away with doing a fairly sweeping bend just by hand, as long as that's not too cold. You know, freezing cold, but in the shed all month, all winter. So now, I've drilled the holes and I'm gonna connect it to this bad boy. Now, I've gotta change this fitting because this fitting, this water's running out and you think it was turned on, it's not. It's siphoning itself out through the pump, through the tank and I can't have that. So I've gotta change that fitting. So I'm gonna order another fitting later, uh, 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 an automatic stop one. So your fitting just clips on there. And now I'm going to turn on my irrigation jet, uh, hose lock jet pump and we'll see how quick, we, how quick we can water this bed and uh, how much water is going to be uh, put on. So bear with me one second. Just talk amongst yourselves. Three, two, one, contact. So I hope you can see the water's going at different angles, different levels, some going across, some going down, and I'm perfectly happy with that. Look at that, just walking across. I've just found a great big worm on the grass. Look at him, he can go in there. Yeah, get in there, my son. Live in there and do your job. So, you can see from that quick demonstration that 
I can water that bed, literally. You probably only need to leave that on for 60 seconds because this is pumped, this is rainwater pumped using my irrigation pump. So, I'm over the moon with that. So I've just got one more to do. And that is the easy way to water anything like this. Yep. I think that's fantastic. And the reason why that is still running is because this, as I say, it's siphoning itself out. Yeah. So that's fantastic. So I'm not going to waste the water with any more demonstrations. And then basically what you do is you plant your plants in there, water them as and when. But if you think the nighttime temperatures early in this next month or so are going to get cold, you can just put the plastic lid back on and the plastic lid slides over and slides over to there, yeah? And covers it over and keeps the cold, the cold wind and the, the rain and the, the, all the nasties off it. And then in the summer, you just put the frame back on and the frame will just look like that, netted, to keep the, the, the nasties off. But I'll do a demonstration on that once, once everything's planted. So I'm going to finish the last one because not only do I want to finish that last one, I want to plant my sweet corn in there today if I can, so I can get something in the ground. Right, then I hope you can see me. So I'm just about to test, just about to test this one. So I'll connect the water and I'll go and turn it on. I haven't tested it yet. I've drilled the holes, but I haven't turned the water on. So you're the first to see it. Three, two, one, contact. Right, well obviously, I've got the hang of it now because this is my sixth and last one for this season. I'm getting a good coverage of water. And as I say, I'm, I'm planting, let me turn it off so it's not too noisy. Right, I hope you can see me. So that works perfectly. I've used a different type of pipe. It's the same type of pipe, but just a different color. So, uh, this is where I'm gonna plant my sweet corn this afternoon. And then what I'll do is I'll, I'll plant the sweet corn in there. I'll put the plastic lid back on overnight. And then any cold weather or any high winds or any torrential rain or any snow or blizzards or hurricane or whatever, won't affect it and then tomorrow morning I'll get up I'll take the lid off and then I'll just do that for the next few days until the sweet corn gets established jobs are good and happy days right I'm back so I finished I say finished these six three-in-one IBC raised vegetable beds are ready for planting up. Now it's late afternoon, it's gone slightly cloudy, so I was going to plant 12 sweet corn plants in this container. So I've changed my mind, I'm going to do it tomorrow, but what I'm going to do is I'm going to leave the lid on with a screw-on lid, that way tomorrow when the sun comes up, It'll start warming it up and it'll warm the soil. The lid's been on, don't get me wrong, the lid's been on for a couple of several weeks. I'm not too bothered about warming up the soil because it's warm enough. But what I want to do is I just want to let it warm up overnight and tomorrow morning in the daylight, it'll heat up. And what I'm going to be interested to do is this. I want to see what the temperature's going to be in there tonight. So, what I've decided to do is this, I've decided to uh, <clears throat> I've got this minimum maximum thermometer how accurate they are I don't know and by the way it's not 17 degrees it's just that I've took this out of the polytunnel so it's still warm yeah 
So what I want to do is, if I can, is I want to try and get hang this. Let me see if I can get this thick wall through there without going mad. Right, so. What I'm going to do is hang this thermometer hang this thermometer let me cut that let me cut that slack off or oh, do you like my new knife as well I was in the agricultural supplies and I thought, you know what, Sean, you haven't bought a knife for a few days. Can, can never have enough knives. So, I've reset it. Now that'll hang a couple of inches above the soil surface. And we'll see what temperature that gets down to during tonight. And then tomorrow, I'll plant 12 sweet corn plants in here. So I think that's enough for one day. All these are done. I have got to put a couple of pieces of plastic on the corner of this one. Yeah, but I'll sort that out tomorrow. And then these are ready for planting. All my beds are ready for planting, but I've got to look at the long range forecast because I've just, Sp speaking to my neighbour who's lived in this area all his life, he was born just down by the base of the mountain of, at the back of where you're standing over in the distance, Elephant Mountain he says they've predicted some frost or some snow in the next week or so so I need to do a long range forecast and double check but notwithstanding Come rain or shine, that sweet corn is going to be planted in there tomorrow. And I'll show you, I'll show you my homemade sweet corn root trainers. And now I'll prepare the holes for, for planting, just in case it's of any interest to anybody. So until then, you take care. And I'm going to go and attempt to edit this video on my new laptop. Who knows? Watch this space. Until then. Happy days, time for a brew.